For more, let's go to Berlin now. Jakob von Weizsäcker is a member of the European Parliament with uh, Germany's Social Democratic Party. Thank you for speaking with us on France 24. By uh, all means, uh, good evening. Uh, when you hear Angela Merkel talking about how it seems uh, that Russia may very well be responsible, did she go far enough? I think uh, she did the right thing by emphasizing, first of all, um, that uh, um, uh, both, of course, Germany and France uh, stand in solidarity with the UK. Um, I think that's extremely important in, in difficult times like that for the UK. Um, and then, of course, uh, jointly, they hinted at the fact that even though we don't have certainty, it does indeed appear to be likely uh, uh, that, uh, that Russia is behind that. Um, uh, and then what was interesting is that clearly they said this calls for a response. But the way they said it was measured in the sense that they were saying, uh, well, we want to go uh, primarily via international uh, institutions that we have in order to deal with serious mat matters like that. So I think it's a very clear and yet at the time measured response uh, uh, um, in, in what is a very serious matter. Both Merkel and Macron uh, hoping for a normalization of relations with Russia. Does do the incidents of the past week make that impossible for the time being? It, it makes it extremely difficult. And uh, uh, um, uh, whether it's reassuring that this is, of course, happening against the backdrop um, of an ongoing um, election campaign that is not declared to be an election campaign in Russia. I don't know whether it helps or, um, or, or make things worse. Uh, but certainly, um, I think f for as long as the election isn't over yet in Russia, um, uh, we uh, um, need to be uh, 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 very watchful uh, for, for what's coming next. <laughs> Uh, just a quick question uh, uh, about what the feeling is within your party, because over in the UK, the Labour Party, of course, divided over remarks uh, by Jeremy Corbyn, uh, the former chancellor, uh, the former so uh, so uh, Social Democrat chancellor, Gerhard Schroeder, who's now on the board of uh, uh, Rosneft, who's now close to Vladimir Putin, uh, the he chairs the Nord Stream Pipeline project. Does that mean there are divisions within the SPD like the ones we see in the UK in the Labour Party? I wouldn't call them divisions, but I think uh, what, what there's clear support, again, for a clear yet measured response. Because, of course, um, once you escalate this kind of matter, uh, uh, there has to be a response. I mean, this, this is serious. This is real. Uh, but at the same time, um, Russia uh, will be our neighbor for <laughs> decades, for centuries to come. Uh, so uh, no matter of how upset we are with the current situation, uh, we also have to bear in mind that this is a neighborhood that will not go away and therefore um, we will have to respond in ways uh, that uh, doesn't make our life too difficult uh, in the longer run. So I think clear yet measured is a good strategy to deal uh, with a serious matter. Jakob von Weizsäcker, let me ask you, the meeting between Merkel and Macron today really ends uh, an electoral cycle that you could say started with the French elections. After all, in your country, you were in pre-electoral mode the whole time. Then it took, uh, uh, there was this dragged out process to form a government. Would you say this is day one of a, a new Franco-German motor to Europe? Yes, I think it is. I, I think the past decade um, has been a difficult one for Europe. And we've had in particular two areas where Europe didn't quite deliver. One was making sure that the co common currency, the euro, works to the benefit of all. And the second area was making certain that this wonderful project of having no borders inside the EU in a refugee crisis doesn't lead to chaos. And these two big issues need to be tackled. And they haven't been tackled partly because of problems in Brussels, but partly also because the Franco-German tandem hasn't worked as harmoniously and vigorously as it should have. I think now there's an enormous opportunity here uh, with a pro-European, um, rather visionary um, a French president on European matters and a, a very pro-European renewed grand coalition in Germany uh, where they say, well, we need a 
um, it, it, it's, it's interesting to note the headline of the coalition agreement says Neuer Aufbruch for Europa, a new dawn for Europe. Um, so this is, uh, and, and you saw that in the press conference, this is, this is really a common agenda. We want to push that forward. Um, a Franco-German understanding, which hopefully we yeah, will but, have this summer. Yeah, but it's already raising, um, I was uh, going to say, it's, it's already raising eyebrows because uh, we have this interview granted by the Dutch Prime Minister, uh, Mark Rutte, mm. to uh, the German newsweekly Spiegel, uh, in which he says if the Germans and the French uh, sit down, it doesn't mean that we and other EU countries will agree with everything that they say. With Britain gone as that sort of counterbalance, there's wariness when the, now perhaps when the French and the Germans sit down yeah. together. Look, um, we did this experiment the past 10 years uh, um, where there wasn't really a, a, even a meaningful attempt to have a, a Franco-German initiative in that sense. Um, and, uh, and we got nowhere or we didn't get, get far enough. I think now we have this opportunity to a Franco-German initiative. I think it's fair to say this is necessary to bring about the, uh, the needed changes for Europe. But obviously, uh, Mark Rutte is right, this is not sufficient. Um, and there's no question, I mean, there's no intention and there's no question institutionally. France and Germany cannot and will not even attempt to steamroll the others. There's no danger of that happening. Of course, it, for, for major changes in Europe, you need unanimity. So what we're talking about really is a Franco-German initiative, putting on the table a decent compromise plan for Europe, and then, of course, negotiating with the other partners to see how we can come together. But without putting a real plan on the table, it's going to be awfully difficult. We saw that the European Commission in the past didn't even dare to, to outline a plan. They, they made it five plans, five scenarios, because they were scared. And that led us nowhere. So this is not about France and Germany attempting to steamroll anybody. It's France and Germany trying to put forward an initiative that can help um, uh, all countries in the EU, uh, certainly those who want to remain in the EU, come together and, 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 and get our act together. Jakob von Weseker, member of the European Parliament for the SPD, many thanks uh, for joining us from Berlin. You're welcome.